it's really nice out and this is day two to, for me to get out and bike ride, take some photos. Today I've got the X100V with me again. I'll probably almost always have that with me. And I'm gonna take pictures with the Kodachrome 64. Fuji X Weekly, it's one of the recipes there. Uh, I thought it looked pretty cool. And so I dialed it into my X100V and we're gonna take some photos. I should be doing yard work though. This yard is an absolute wreck, but I'm gonna go bike riding instead. Uh, it's just the way it, the way it is. As you can see, I forgot my helmet. So that's a bad thing, but uh, I just no excuse. Just, I didn't bring my helmet, which is horrible. This is another example of something I've driven past a million, million times. And I just happened to look to the left today on my bike without my helmet. Maybe that's it, my helmet was blocking me. And I saw these amazing cars. This is awesome. So today I'm on uh, fully, nearly fully automatic. I set my camera to F2 on the aperture. So I get some really nice background blur. The ISO and the uh, shutter are both on automatic though. Because why not? It's really, really, like the Fuji does a great job. So that's what we're shooting with today. I wanna to talk to you for a second about being a teacher and how amazing it could be. So Reggie was one of my former students from way back in the day probably 15 years ago or so. And he was one of the coolest students to ever walk into the back, into my room. One of the smartest, one of the most ethical, one of the just most brilliant kids to ever walk in. An amazing artist and a human being. And to see when I drive or ride my bike by parts of Omaha, to see his work on the side of a building is uh, absolutely fantastic. It's, uh, <laughs> I, I miss teaching. Working with students is the most rewarding thing you could possibly do. Uh, this is one of those examples. I had nothing to do with this. I was not his art teacher or anything like that, but um, it's still amazing to be a small, tiny part of his story. Um, <laughs> it's pretty awesome. So I get to uh, be proud of that part of my career no matter what happens in the future. We're gonna go visit my buddy, Kurt Johnson, the most amazing nature landscape photographer you'll find. Let's go say hi. Hello, man. Listen up. <laughs> what are you doing? Taking some pictures, man. What are you doing? What's I'm going doing on? Doing a bike ride. Really? Yeah. Are you all oh, sweating? You're tall. Yeah. Kurt's tall. But you're mighty. Kurt Johnson. All right, so guys, I'm here with Kurt. Kurt Johnson Photography. We're in his amazing little studio. Big studio. It's a big studio. Perspective. It's perspective. Yeah, perspective. And uh, Kurt, what do you do? Take pictures. What do you take pictures of, dude? Well, I take pictures of nature. I take pictures of nature in abstract form and in landscape form and inside and outside. Today I'm inside, I'm working on a big project with my boy Jared here. This seems weird, this seems like a news interview. I feel like I'm conscious of the camera. Really? <laughs> I wonder why. Yeah, so we're working on a big project. Show right us, now. tell us what you got going on. Well, um, we're working on a hospital project. Actually, it's a clinic project. And part of their, uh, kind of their look is succulents. And so Jared's working on one portion of it. I'm working on the other portion of it. And it's gonna be for large scale in hallways on vinyl wall covering. And these are gonna, these images, these really super tight shots are gonna be of uh, various kinds of succulents everywhere um, for uh, exam rooms. So you probably notice there's a big, huge window right over there, which is fabulous for light. Just simple light, simple little reflection and stuff. However, when I'm really trying to pull on a lot of detail and get a lot more depth of field and stuff, I need to supplement it with uh, strobe lights. So, hence, 
all the gear here. Yeah, I... And I got all kinds of reflectors and gobos and everything else to make, you know, pretty much as perfect of a shot that I can make, but still creating something that looks like it could have been shot outside. That's a little bit of a trick sometimes. Because sometimes we try to over light and over produce and over direct and over, 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 over think everything. Thank you, Kurt. Little studio tour. Pretty awesome. Anytime, man. More videos in the future? Road trip? Yeah. We'll Let's do it. go. All right, I'm gonna get I got back. new tires. Let's go. I gotta get back on my bike. All right, man. Before I get too tired. Thanks for uh, brightening my day, bro. All right, man. All right. I'm often looking for scenes like this where the sign, part of the sign is sticking out and it's bright and then there's shadows behind it. So that bright part really, really is bright and then your eye goes right to there. Along the road to uh, wherever I'm gonna go, I don't know where I'm going. I found a nice little spot against the sky, the swaying grass type stuff. I just have to, be, I have to be careful of the grass down here. My. Uh, my family is not very happy about the fact that I brought home a tick a couple weeks ago. And so uh, I was uh, in trouble a little bit from them for that. Rightfully so. I've got this shot here that I'm thinking about four or five different compositions and I thought I'd show you and let you tell me which one would be the best one. Which one do you like the best? I'm interested to see how the Kodachrome 64 works on these kind of colors. And in this scene, I'm also trying to get that purple with the yellow. So you see the dandelions on the ground there and see if I could do something. The purple, these flowery budding things. I am not, I take pictures of nature. I don't know anything about nature. Um, <laughs> those are gonna be in focus. And I'm wondering if there's enough dandelions to kind of throw some cool background yellow blur down there. So we'll see. You know, yesterday I went on my bike ride and my helmet was looking crazy. Now my hair is looking crazy. But uh, the skyline is really bright and kind of washed out. So getting a cool shot of the buildings, as much <laughs> as many big buildings as we have in Omaha, is kind of out a little bit. The only thing I could do is maybe underexpose, go down real kind of dark and make the sky kind of cool. If I can do that, I'm not sure. My wife just texted me, reminding me that I had to be home in like 20 minutes. I'm like 10 miles out and I don't know how to do math real well, but I'm gonna have to book it home and see if I can get there in time. So no more, no more video because it's gonna slow me down. Uh, until next time.